action on Saturday. Top of the SEC traveling to the bottom. Georgia last in the conference standings, but they're going to have to deal with a number one Auburn team riding an 18 game winning streak. Longest active in Division One, 21 and 1 on the season. It's their second best start in program history. Out to a pretty nice start in this one as well. Wendell Green Jr. off the backboard to Devin Cambridge. That's a highlight you'll see all night. Auburn up 14 off some mixtape stuff. Five and a half minutes left in the first half. Cambridge grabbing the offensive board, kicks it out to Green, returning the favor there as Auburn puts themselves up 15, then under three. Katie Johnson out in transition, the rip and the lay, plus one. Auburn up 15, that was their largest lead of the game. You can catch Georgia on the live line at half at 25 to one if you like burning money. But not so fast. They've never beaten number one in school history. Doesn't look like they're gonna in this one until it did. Early second half, eight point game. Cario Oquindo steals and runs the floor. UGA down six. About a minute later. Georgia, good ball moving, finds a wide open Jackson Etter. He cashes three. We got a one point game. Kept off an 11 0 run that spanned less than two minutes. Got to stop the leak in here, number one. Mid-second half. UGA now down three, out on the break again. Aaron Cook finds Noah Bauman in the corner and he cashes the triple. Game tied at 56, under four to go, tied at 64. Georgia, multiple looks here. Another bite at the apple. Finally, one goes. Georgia up two. Oquendo, 16 of his 25 came in the second half. Crean's all fired up. Under a minute rating. Game tied at 70. Aaron Cook runs the floor, takes the contact, plus the foul. Georgia up two. He would miss the free throw. Bulldogs can feel it. Suing Auburn possession. 38 ticks remaining. Need an answer. Katie Johnson drives inside. Tucks, lays one home. We're tied at 72. Heading up the court. Georgia's possession. Allman again from the corner. Three, no. Off the mark. Rebound. Wendell Green going to get the rock and says, push the pace. Pedal to the floor. Spins, loses it, and then wins. Auburn up two. Green had 19. He was 0 for 10 in the second half prior to that lay-in right there. So 3.6 seconds remaining. Number one in front. Georgia needs a prayer. Inbounding from the baseline. Time winding down. Aaron Cook gets a heave. Doink. Auburn survives. Make it 19 straight wins as they improve to 22 and one on the season. They're now 10 and 0 in the SEC for the first time since the 1958-1959 campaign. But turning our attention here to the top team in the land, Auburn and Bruce Pearl collectively wiping their brow here as they survive a scare. 74-72, uh, the SEC top of the conference takes care of the bottom of the conference here in Georgia. Georgia gave number one everything they could handle in this one, so I'll ask it this way, Matt. Is it a valuable scare at this point in the season or a sign of weakness for the Tigers here on Saturday? I'm not going to say it's a valuable scare because Auburn's already had one of these. Mm -hmm. They played against Missouri on the road on January 25th. That was a one-point win. So I'm not saying we're developing a pattern here. Now, Auburn, by the way, entered the day in multiple predictive metrics outside the top four. So again, the number one is there for the AP ranking, and it'll keep that number one ranking because it was able to win again. But predictive metrics have never said at any point this season that Auburn is the best team in men's college basketball. And it's because of performances like this where Auburn would be expected to go into Georgia a bad team and win but comfortably, you know, at least by six or seven, if not nine or ten points. That is not what happened there. They, they kind of escaped, to be honest. Uh, Georgia really had a lot of opportunities late, kept it close. And then Wendell Green Jr. hit a humongous bucket. No whistle, no whistle on that play to give Auburn the winning margin there, barely. But Bruce Pearl does kind of thrive in the chaos a bit as well. And I still think this team is a viable national title contender, of course. But if you want to make the case against Auburn as the best overall team, not the most deserving for the number one ranking, that's different from mm -hmm. best overall team in the sport, I think you can make that argument. And, of course, a close shave at a poor Georgia team only enhances your argument. If Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.